Hi guys and girls of the Cloud Tech community, I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and here are some tech highlights that are featured in the news this week in the world of cloud computing and IoT. I'd like to thank you all for your kind tweets, retweets, comments and feedback from last week's news. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. This week IBM is suing its former CIO. IBM claims that Jeff Smith threatens to violate his one-year non-competition agreement by going to AWS. IBM is suing its former Global Chief Information Officer Jeff Smith, claiming that he had violated a non-compete agreement and demanding he repay $1.7 million in stock bonuses. Smith began a new role at IBM competitor Amazon Web Services this week, according to a report published in US publication Westfair Online. IBM claims the secrets that Smith threatens to take to IBM's competitor are so sensitive that he was instructed not to retain copies of written project presentations. IBM said Smith was one of only a dozen high-ranking executives involved in top-level decision-making regarding the development of IBM's next generation cloud computing technology. This technology is due for release in the coming year. A first step in the government IoT security battle legislation, Senator Mark Warner Corey Gardner, Ron Wyden and Steve Daines dropped the Internet of Things Cyber Security Improvement Act of 2017. The bill seeks to drive much needed cyber security improvements in the Internet connected devices. In addition, the bill would amend the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. The new contractual clauses would force manufacturers seeking to sell to the federal government to close the most obvious security holes in the Internet connected devices. Step aside Rosetta Stone because Facebook's AI bots not only just learned their own language, but they learned how to lie. Hmm, how many users does Facebook have? Here are a few quick Facebook stats from the social media skinny and from Facebook. Worldwide, Facebook has over 2 billion monthly active users. Okay, 83 million are fake profiles, but not everyone's perfect. Every sex, six sexty. <laughs> Every 60 seconds on Facebook, 510,000 comments are posted, 293,000 statuses are updated, and 136,000 photos are uploaded. Facebook has been working on artificial intelligence that claims to be great at negotiating, makes up its own language, and learns to lie. This AI experiment comes out of a lab called Facebook Artificial Intelligence Research. It recently announced breakthrough chatbot software that can ruthlessly negotiate with other software or directly with humans. This week in the news we find out that Disney is now watching you watching its films. Yes, this is really happening. Disney is now using AI to track filmgoers' true feelings about its films. Facial recognition is being used to measure reactions in real time. So there's no room for manoeuvres in the back row, folks. In fact, what are you doing in a Disney movie anyways? There shouldn't be any manoeuvres. There's always been a long tradition of movie studios testing out new films to see how its audience reactions are before launching them in a worldwide release. But Disney is taking it to a whole new level with their latest research innovation. Whilst this is an exciting era in the responsive storytelling, it also raises some red flags about the collection of personal data. In July, Disney Research presented a new process called Factorized Vocational Autoencoders, which means measuring complex audience reactions by assessing facial expressions. This deep learning system has been trained to watch an audience of hundreds of faces in a darkened theater and to track their reactions. Are they smiling or crying, bored or even asleep? Or in the back row, you should leave right now. Also in the news this week, we find out how blockchain could be involved in helping stop climate change and could it be the superhero technology that we need. Blockchain technology could potentially be the game changer on impacting how we fight climate change. It could allow us to work together and bypass big energy companies as well as reward those who have met climate goals. Blockchain technology has the potential to revolutionise almost any industry it's applied to. According to We Forum, blockchain's key property in fighting climate change is its decentralised nature, which enables interconnection between the human swarm. Climate change is fundamentally an international problem. A major difficulty in tackling it is navigating the web of different languages and regulations between countries. Blockchain provides a solution by cutting out the middleman and the bureaucracy. Google announced today that it's cutting the price for high-speed storage attached to its cloud virtual machines. Customers will now pay up to 63% less for local SSD storage. 
that's attached to the virtual machines they use in the Google Cloud. Local SSD storage is designed to offer companies high-speed data access for cloud applications that require it for high performance, like data analysis and other tasks. Google storage will persist for as long as the underlying instance keeps running in the company's cloud. The price cut shows the continuing battle among cloud providers like Google, Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. All of these platforms regularly cut their prices in a bid to attract and retain business. This week saw two Australian senators launch the Parliamentary Friends of Blockchain Group. Australian Senators Sam Dastiari and Jane Hume officially began the Parliamentary Friends of Blockchain Group. The group will support blockchain technology implementations in Australia's public and private sectors. The bipartisan initiative, with Dastiari coming from the Labour Party and Hume coming from the Liberal Party, the group hopes to encourage the usage of blockchain technology in government and industry. Blockchain technology may allow Australia to forge ahead of policy matters that stall innovation from providing funding to approving studies. The government often holds the key to the next wave of in innovation. Australia's parliament has seized this opportunity and the government has become proactive in its approach. Many countries would be wise to follow and learn Australia's example. The booming market of SD-WAN sees Macquarie Telecom launch its service. Luke Clifton, the CEO of Macquarie Telecom, said it's the most exciting development in the market since the dawn of 3G. Macquarie Telecom has launched a software-defined wide area network, or SD-WAN service, which it claims is the only network in Australia with the capabilities of being able to leverage multiple carriers. The booming SD-WAN market is expected to grow to one billion US dollars by the end of this year. Macquarie Telecom SD-WAN network features intelligent dynamic packet routing, which means network functions and information can be carried over a mix of links, possibly including MBN, 4G or microwave links. The software automatically deciphers the best pathway to transmit application information and workloads, helping to ensure the highest speeds and lowest latencies are always achieved. Macquarie Telecom has partnered with US Cloud SD-WAN pioneer VeloCloud to offer the service after extensive research of 38 other providers worldwide. Users rarely experience any downtime or outages if a link goes down as the other links within the network take over. Macquarie Telecom said no one in the business will even know anything has happened. Microsoft opens up over local cloud regulations. Microsoft has launched a digital guide to cloud regulations in Asia Pacific. The guide is aimed at helping key decision makers regarding the adoption of cloud. In Australia specifically, the guide is set out to achieve more efficiency, cost savings, strategic business objectives and enhance the level of security and privacy compared with existing on-premise solutions. According to Microsoft, Australia is one of the most advanced markets in the Asia-Pacific region for the adoption of cloud computing and locally many organisations are leveraging cloud services for the benefit of their employees or customers. Microsoft Asia Pacific Japan and Australia Regional Director of Legal Affairs Andrew Cook said the guide is a result of its customers wanting to transform digitally but are unsure about how to do so in a compliant manner. As a provider of cloud services, we know it's our responsibility to play a key role in helping our customers navigate this legal and regulatory landscape. That's why Microsoft has launched a digital guide to cloud regulations in Asia Pacific aimed at legal and compliance professionals and other key decision makers. It is the first platform of its kind in the region and a comprehensive resource on the regulations that apply to the adoption of cloud. Great news for Tech Data's technology solutions business, which has been appointed the distributor of Red Hat mobile application platform in Australia and five other Asia Pacific countries. Tech Data will also distribute Red Hat's mobile solution in India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand. The distributor said it will be looking to invest in additional sales and technical resources to enable partners in positioning Red Hat Mobile Application Platform to their customers. Red Hat Mobile Application Platform supports an agile approach to developing, integrating and deploying enterprise mobile applications, according to Tech Data. Tech Data Vice President of Specialist Business Asia Pacific, Naresh Desai, said, In our experience, Red Hat Mobile Application Platform is an excellent solution for enabling partners to develop and manage mobile business applications quickly and cost-effectively.
I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard. Thanks for watching this week's Cloud Computing and IoT News Highlights. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and colleagues and look forward to seeing you all next week. Be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.